Rattler Vlog, episode 14 for this Wednesday, June the 17th, 2020. What's going on, guys? Uh, thank you for hanging out here tonight. We had Pietro last night, and it was great to talk to him and uh, connect with him from Brazil. And uh, tonight we have a very special guest from that same era. From that same era, we're going to go women's basketball. And we are going to connect with women's basketball, number 12. No, number number 12? Yeah, number 12. Had to think about it for a second. Kennedy Weary joining hey. us right now. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? How about this crazy deluge of rain we've got going on? I don't think I've seen anything like this in Medicine Hat for a very long time. I know. It's so crazy. It makes Something me feel lazy, else. kind of, though. Oh. It, you know, I find it totally refreshing, though. It's great. You know, typically it's around this time where the coolies and everything, they kind of start to turn that yellowish brown. But you go out right now, and it's just, like, beautiful and green and amazing. So I love it. Oh, no. It's like we're getting an actual spring this year. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like we're getting a lot of rain, so it's pretty green. And whenever you drive outside the city, too, it's it's beautiful. So yeah, mm -hmm. everyone. Kennedy Kennedy started her uh, teaching career. This was your first year, right? Yes, it was. What a year to start! <laughs> it was. Oh it was... my goodness. Mm -hmm. Tell me this. Tell me this. I drive by schools all the time, and I still see all the vehicles in the parking lots. And I mean, clearly, the the educators are all still reporting to work and so on. But what is actually happening these days with the teachers when they are in school, but there's no little ones around anywhere? Um, it depends what school you're at. So I've seen a lot in the public division for sure. Um, where, and then I just you have to keep doing your social distancing, I guess. So when you're in the school making sure you're marking down the rooms. That's what we have to do. So whatever room we go in, we just have to mark down so our janitor knows and he can go in and, and wipe whatever we touch kind of thing. So yeah. those janitors are doing so much work. I can't even imagine like our Jaime at our school. He's waxed the floors completely. He's, oh, it's insane what they do. So yeah. lots of love for them. <laughs> so are you, are you preparing lesson plans or is there still a lot of day by day teaching things that you're still doing or like what, what is occupying your time now then? Well, right now I'm in the final week with my class. We're officially done on Friday. So I've been kind of preparing everything for the, the last week and I'll have my final Google meet tomorrow with my kids, which I'm really sad about, but, and then after that, it's just start to plan for next year. So, mm -hmm. So any big plans for the summer then? Uh, I mean, a lot of us are staying close to home. How about you? Yeah, same with me. I really wanted to do another big extravagant trip with one of my friends and stuff. But I guess this year it won't happen. Hopefully head out to the mountains a lot and stay close to home. So Exactly, exactly. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of trips, you've had a chance to take uh, a couple of spectacular trips. Really, I think you went to Europe uh, a couple oh, yeah. of summers ago. Or was that even last summer? That was last summer. I went and visited Dragana in her hometown in Serbia. And then my cousin's also um, in Belgium working. So I got to see him too. So it was really awesome. Wow. Mm -hmm. So tell me, tell me a little bit about that trip to see Dragana. I mean, she, she was uh, on the uh, same basketball team as you were for, I think, mm -hmm. two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That must, have been, that must have been quite the trip and almost like a life highlight, hey? It was. It was my first trip over overseas too so it was a huge experience and just to open your eyes and see kind of what they live through and it's a completely different world right so mm -hmm. it was beautiful and i i want to go back i keep dreaming i went to montenegro i didn't even know what montenegro was and Dragon was like we're going and it was her vacation spot since she was a kid so definitely a hidden gem for sure in the world i think um you know for a lot of people in north america we think that we live in the greatest place <laughs> on earth, right? Like we think that we are the center of the universe, but you know, it, 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 I'm sure it's a real eye opener when you go to some of these other countries and you realize, wait a minute, they actually, in some, in some ways, they might have it better than we do. Would you agree? I would agree, but I do. It's hard to say because there's lots of conflict still there. Like they have a lot of kind of stuff from the past and I, I feel very safe in Canada like I can walk down the street and stuff and not feel like I don't know like I feel I can go for a run at night and not feel yeah. unsafe kind of thing but there you gotta kind of gotta be careful too but other than that it oh it's amazing I I would totally move there in a heartbeat if I could so 
Yeah. So looking back on your uh, first year of teaching, uh, was it all the, uh, by the way, what, what grade? Is it grade, uh, grade two? Uh, grade four, five split. And then I taught oh, okay. sports academy too. All right. And mm -hmm. is it, is it all you thought it was going to be? Was it, <laughs> was it easier? Was it more difficult? How would you, how would you rate your first year? It is a mix of, it's a roller coaster, right? So especially as a first year, you're learning your curriculum. And this year I had two curriculums to do with the four five split. So it was very, it was very difficult and it's just kind of day by day and it gets better and the kids make it worth it. And your staff, I had an incredible staff that was always behind me and lots of support too. And with the Academy, I am blessed to have really strong relationships with Notre Dame. So I had a lot of mentors from there too, helping me out. So it was, it right. was a crazy year, but I loved every second of it, honestly. Yep. So that Academy, sorry, uh, is that, is that basketball or like it's all sports, right? Yeah. I what cycle through. I cycle through four sports, uh, basketball, volleyball, baseball, and soccer. And then we go on like little explore days kind of every three days. And we went to like hit 403. We got to go see Ed Styles. We went to two ACAC provincial games. Um, you saw us there, I think. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just lots of stuff. And we just focus on physical literacy and building that in students because it's a grades four to six. So it's kind of the first one. I feel like I don't know if there's anywhere else in southern Alberta that really does what we do. So it's really unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with with your with your kids in the class, um, they, they probably kind of keep you grounded a little bit because I mean, here you are a five year. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to pump your tires, but I mean, in in Rattler folklore or whatever, like you're you're one of the all time greats as far as that goes. The kids probably don't care at all, though, do they? <laughs> uh, no, well, some of them, like, I have a few little girls that, uh, like, would come and watch me play, I guess. But yeah. other than that, not really. Like, they Google me sometimes Your and see Google all my pictures. Set up oh. yet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there goes my Google Home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, other than that, yeah, not really anything. So <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, and and anybody that knows you knows that uh, over the past year, the the first year that you haven't, you know, put on that yellow and black and got on the court and and given it your all, uh, of course you missed that though, didn't you? Oh, it is so, especially being on the scores table. It made it really difficult last year. Um, kind of just like always being there and stuff that like, I didn't really take a break and you need to I could playing five years and then not I don't mm -hmm. know it's really hard it's it doesn't get any easier I think this year it really I was at peace with it more but yep. yeah mm -hmm. yep but when you're at that scores table you get a you get a different perspective as well right I mean Definitely. you see the game in, in a way that you probably didn't when you were on the court or even on the bench or whatever so in some ways I mean it's probably fun in that way too right Oh, for sure. I and getting to watch Morgie and and Paige have their final year, like all year. It was just it's so fun to still watch the girls you played with and stuff finish out and yeah, and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So looking back over that five years uh, with the Rattlers, what? Well, let's start right right with square one. What are some of your rookie year memories when you just broke in, fresh out of high school at uh, at McCoy, and here you are at this next level? Refresh my memory. Who were like the fifth year players at that point that you really looked up to? We didn't have fifth years at that point. We had okay. third years. We had, uh, Megan Tresovic was at one of our third years, and we had a lot of. Um, like second year players like MJ Ritchie, she played at St. Mary's. She was she broke the rebound record too um, before I did. And yeah, like lots of talented players, but we had a, I, I'm going to say like, we had a really good rookie season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we kind of, we had a really tight group because I had all of the girls like Courtney Rose Deba, Dakota, Dakota Shocker. We all were really tight from high school and then Jade from Hat High. So it was kind of like a really nice local group with Sierra mm -hmm. and Allie too. They were a year older than us. So it was kind of cool. But then as rookies, we would kind of do funny things all the time. Like we would all pick the same color on a Friday and wear it and see if anyone noticed. So like, <laughs> we'd be like, okay, we're gonna work purple today. And we'd have like purple things all over. Like, you know, we wear a t-shirt and see, no one ever noticed, but exactly. we, fun things. And we bought onesies and we wore them on the bus once. Like it was just fun stuff like that. Right. But then, but then as you progress, then you're kind of looked at for more of a leadership role and, you know, you maybe have to keep it a little more serious. Is that, is that accurate? Or did you maintain that level of fun all the way through? 
<laughs> uh, definitely, like I grew a lot. I think my third year, it really hit because we had such a big group of rookies coming in. Um, I think we had seven rookies that year, seven or nine, I can't remember. But yeah, we had to, so I had to really change kind of what I was doing, I think, just to prepare myself. So yeah. Yep. So when, when you are in that last year and you look at the new rookies this time, do you ever think, when I was a rookie, we never did that. We didn't have it that easy. You guys have it so good these days. Was there a lot of that kind of that kind of that old man shaking his fist at the cloud sort of thing? Uh, sometimes. I mean, we as rookies, we always had to carry the bags and stuff. Yeah. And then, well, Clayton changed that, which is totally fine. Um, and he changed it so everyone kind of had their own ship. So that was kind of like one thing. But other than that, um, I think we were all, I think it was kind of the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, road trip stories. Was there ever anything just really hilarious or just anything that really stands out as far as road trips go? Because, I mean, I, I'd imagine that they were a lot of fun as well. You had some talented teams, so it's not like you were, you know, losing a lot on the road or anything like that. You guys, you guys had a lot of success at home and away, right? Mm -hmm. A road, I don't know. There's so many to really narrow one down but us girls we kind of started this trend and it was va on valentine's day we would do secret admirers and stuff <laughs> so sometimes there'd be a few of those on the bus and i think group had to give one once and it was just so funny it was i forget who it was but yeah we had a whole bunch of those like all over the school and stuff like random guys would come and give like a secret admirer gift from one of the teammates it's kind of like secret santa but we yeah rachel Sherman, i think came up with that one it was really fun yeah. Uh, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Roop, yes. um, you know, back, back uh, in, in that era, uh, he, he was quite active and instrumental in a lot of ways with the team and, and it brought him such immense pride to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you look back on that whole era there and all the hard work that he put into it. I mean, he certainly deserves a lot of accolades there, doesn't he? Oh, yes. I, I miss him. I hope he's doing well. And I, I have him on Facebook and stuff, but definitely yeah. one of our biggest fans for sure. And when he would do the roller coaster with the fans and all that, <laughs> like those are things you never forget about Roop. And yeah, he's one of the biggest fans, I'd say, in, in Rattler history. <laughs> yeah. Is there any is there any one particular game that stands out? I mean, you know, whether it was uh, the conference championships or correct me if I'm wrong, you went to the Nationals once? Yes. In yep. my final year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any any particular games that stand out for any reason at all for you that uh, just even now you'll be like lying in bed trying to sleep, but you're just kind of replaying it over and over <laughs> in your mind, you know? I would say the semifinal against C to get to get us to nat nas national. Sorry. Yeah. Um, was definitely the biggest one, but I always find myself talking about in my third year. Um, which game was that? That would have been our first game against Nate. And we, Nate was rated the number one seed and we were the fourth seed in the South. And we played the night, like the game of our lives. It was crazy. Dragana was on Tori and Tori was this huge post that was kind of unstoppable at the time. And she was on her and she had the game of her life on her. She didn't score, but she just played defense on her. And then Cordy was like seven for seven from the field. It was insane. <laughs> and then Getz, I think she was in foul trouble for the first half. And then when she came off on the third, she scored like three threes in a row. It was just one of those games that would just for us. And I'll never kind of forget that one. Yeah. Just every, everything was working out in your favor, hey? Yeah, it was crazy. And then they ended, so we beat them, but they hosted Nationals. And then they beat the number one seed at Nationals. So it was mm -hmm. just... It was funny. <laughs> yeah. Now you're you're pretty humble, but I mean you've got a number of records and uh, you know CCAA All Canadian and whatnot. Is there any is there any award that you won that just you're most proud of than than any of the other ones? Um, I don't really know. Um, I guess. Or do you even reflect on that sort of thing? Do they yeah, do, do these I'm... do these medals and awards and stuff? Do they just kind of sit in the back of the closet and they probably have a layer of dust on them already? I mean, it's cool to look back on, but I don't really you don't really talk about it ever yeah. really, anyways. But I would say probably the All Canadian was one of my best ones, I guess, because I put that as a goal, a personal goal for myself in my fourth mm -hmm. year. I said like next year I really want to go for that. And I'm, I was really, I always set goals for myself and that was kind of yep. one of them. So to achieve that was cool. You, you played 
with a level of intensity and passion. I mean, like you, it, all you had to do is look in your eyes on the court and you, could, <laughs> you just had this fire burning and you would take no crap from anyone. Like it was just, you had a level of intensity, like probably very few even had that level that they could even reach, you know? Where did that come from? And like, was it, did it come from even playing sports as a kid or, or is that something your parents taught you to always give 110% or like, how, how did you, how do you find that level of intensity that other people just don't have? Um, I do give credit to my parents. Um, they definitely raised me to be the best version of myself, I guess. And just to kind of grit it out and always work hard. That's kind of the word I I like the word outwork. I always go by that. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I'm, I guess I'm just so competitive that mm -hmm. like when someone would hit me in the face, that, that would get me going. Like it would, <laughs> I would be so mad. And I think that, or I'd sprain my ankle. It was weird. I would sprain my ankle and then I would go off for a few seconds. I was notorious for that. And then I would come on and I would play even better. I don't know what it was, but spraining my ankle just helped. So I don't really know. Yeah. And the coach would say, look, if you need to take a break, take a break. But are you ready? And the answer was always, yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Even if you weren't ready, the answer was, yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Jason, I remember when Jason coached me for my first three years, I would sprain it. He wouldn't even say anything. And then he'd just be like, you ready to go? I'm like, okay, yep. And then I'd just go back on. He wouldn't even ask because I, I literally did it like every practice. It was insane. So. Wow. It's so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, so. Like so. That. I, and, and I can tell you, you miss it. Absolutely. Uh, where were some of your favorite places to play around the ACAC for whatever reason? What would you say? Ooh, probably Red Deer, I want to say. Because okay. their gym was always, it's super small. It was super small at the time. Now it's beautiful and huge. But probably that gym, just because it was so loud in there too, when it was packed. But yeah, I guess Red Deer probably would have been my favorite or State. They just have a nice gym. Um, I yep. actually, in high school when we play, it was one of my worst. Like, I think everyone has their one place where they just play awful. And in high school, I played awful in State all the time, just with the hoops being so much further. I don't know what it was, but then I finally got over that. And I, I actually enjoyed playing in that gym through college and stuff. So, Well, you know, I mean, the dimensions of the court are the same, but it's just different things about it that, uh, yeah. that might kind of throw you off a little bit. You know, you might be getting ready to do a free throw, but it just looks different from back home or whatever, right? So. And they have this big camera, like, on you. So, like, you'll be shooting a free throw, and the screen's on the side, and it's like, right on your face. It was just yeah. like, oh, yeah, little things like that, so... Yeah, that's something. Hey, so getting back to teaching, what uh, do we know anything at all about fall and what it's going to look like in your school or like what? I mean, you, you ask any kid or any student and like they're just saying, I just want it to be back to normal. Can we just have normal mm -hmm. classes and normal teaching and learning and so on? Is it safe to say that that's what the teachers want as well? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Any teacher you talk to is going to say that no one's I mean, Maybe at first it was nice to have like a little bit of a break, like, but no. It, it, it got old quick, kids. didn't it? It just got old so fast and you miss them so much. That's why we get into teaching to be with the kids and see their faces. That would, that's what makes it the job the best, right? So exactly. definitely missing them and hopefully it's normal. We don't know yet. We won't know till like August 1st if we're back in the class with there's a whole bunch of scenarios, three scenarios, and hopefully we'll find out soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, back back when back when this all canceled and day or when it all happened in days leading up to to school being canceled, and whatnot, were you were you paying attention to the story at all to the to the news stories or like did you see it coming? You know what I mean? Honestly, the first thing that happened was I remember the NBA. That's what really started everything, and that's what I remember clearly. And I remember the whole weekend, everyone was like, on the Friday, was like, "Are we going to be back?" or what are we gonna do right and then sunday they came out with what they canceled school or whatever and then it was just crazy because then everyone's like okay now we have to flip our curriculum and get it online and figure out the platforms you're going to use best with your class and then teach people like literally have to teach parents and teach your kids how to kind of 360 it right i don't know it was, exactly. it was hard but you know they, the kids are so resilient and they're they're so incredible they'll figure out anything yep. right for you so. So were you part of any of these uh, drive-by parades or anything else? I mean, I see some of the schools and some of the classes doing some really, you know, some really fun things for the uh, kids. 
while they're stuck at home. Was there anything your school did for the uh, students to kind of lighten the mood a little bit? Yeah, we did a drive by too. So we drove our bus route and saw all our kids and St. Michael's was out the same day. So we got some extra ones. So that was awesome. And then McCoy basketball, because I coached JV this year um, yep. and helped out with senior. And we did kind of a little thing in King Cooley for the, for the seniors graduating this year, because I can't even imagine being a senior this year and having their seasons kind of come to an end. We were just in provincials kind of era and they didn't get yep. to go. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I, uh, I had a chance to uh, to go to the Crescent Heights uh, parade that they had this past oh, nice. weekend. I'm not I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but uh, what they did is they had all the grads set up along the loop, the circle in the kind of the bandshell area there, and uh, you know the the, uh, the the students all brought a lawn chair. And most of them were wearing, you know, either their grad gown or their tuxedo or whatever. Like they were dressed to the nines, each and every one of these students. But then they had to sit six feet apart from each other. And I mean, as much as they were all smiles and waves, I personally thought that it was kind of sad. I oh, felt, yeah. I felt terrible for all these kids because i mean you your grad was not that long ago right what a very very special time you know to celebrate all these years of hard work and i mean you know when you're when you're 18 uh, 12 years of of education is a really long time like it's almost your entire life it's all you've ever known practically and to see them uh distancing from each other and not necessarily very close with their friends as much as they were smiling, I thought, ah, they need a, they need a big party. They need a big celebration. I so I just, oh, I feel so bad for them. I just, my co little cousin too. She's not little. She's graduating in Lloyd this year, and she's just heartbroken. Like I just can't even imagine. And like you said, they deserve it. After twelve years of education, they earn it, right? So oh, yeah. I'm I'm so glad that went well at Crescent Heights, so it looked phenomenal. So that's they awesome. did they did a great job, great job of organizing oh. it. All right, Kennedy, time for show and tell. Uh, yeah. We've we've been doing this now for uh, the past couple of weeks, and uh, we had Pietro on last night, and he was at his girlfriend's place, so he had absolutely nothing to to show. But so we so we let him off the hook there. But how about you? So what we're asking is find something in your environment there that has a deep personal meaning and maybe a really cool story attached to it. So it's okay. all yours. What do you got? I decided that I would do this and maybe it's a little cheesy, but um, as a Rattler, I, I think this is the final thing you do in the locker room. We have yeah. these on our lockers and you take it out and it's kind of one of those, I think it's the hardest part because especially after five years, you have the same locker and you take it out. It's kind of the end of the era, right? So I picked this and I picked one more thing. Is that okay? Yeah, do it. Go okay. ahead. So I picked this pin because it rep represents, um, it's the Medicine Hat Catholic Board. Yep. And it's our pin we got on our faith formation day just to sig signify basically like the first day of the job and welcome to the board. And I'm really proud of, to be a teacher. And yeah. Yep. So what is that? What is that nameplate? The Rattler nameplate? What does that mean to you? 10, 15, 20 years from now, you know, you'll have kids of your own that, you know, ask you, mom, you played basketball? Really? Were you any good? Like, what, what is that? What does that nameplate mean to you? I just, it just holds all the memories, I think. So whenever I look at it, it's just, you think of all the times you had in the locker room with the girls and uh, getting ready for the games and practices and, um, yeah, just, there's so much, so many memories behind it. I don't even know how to explain it. But and the, the number twelve, I'll always cherish that number. And hopefully, did, yeah. did that number mean anything to you? Did you pick that, or how did that? What 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 is the significance there? Um, I it was my I think it was one of my first basketball numbers. Actually, I picked it in grade seven when I started actually playing, and then I in high school someone else was that, so I had to pick number five. But then I got the chance to wear twelve and. And yeah, it was so much fun. So, yeah. So do you deep down hope that you have these records as long as you can, or, or do you actually want to see someone break them? I mean, are you that proud of Rattler nation that you're like, <laughs> come on girls, I want someone to, to, you know, take the rebound record, just all the different things that you accomplished there. What do you think? Definitely. Oh, for sure. Especially I hope it's a Rattler. I, I that's all I can hope for. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I hope someone breaks it and puts in the work to do it. And 
definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, Kennedy, hey, thank you so much for hanging out here tonight. We appreciate it. It's always great to, to connect with you. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, when volleyball and basketball rolls around, I mean, fingers crossed for, for October, um, you know, we don't really know. Maybe we might have to wait until January or beyond there, but uh, it's uh, going to be great to see you back in the gym. You yes. know, a lot, a lot of the former players, you know, they come and go and, and we don't see them again. Yeah, right? no, it's, it's, I hope they have a season. I, have, I hope they have some, something, right? Even in January, if it's a short season, and I'm really hoping for them, that's for sure. I can't even imagine being an athlete right now, even a student. Like, yeah. Goodness, so. yeah. All right, well, so, so, so final words. Um, if, if anyone's watching this and maybe it's a high school student and they don't really know what they want to do with their education or, or you know, maybe they're into athletics and think, hey, you know what? I could be a Rattler basketball player. I played for the, I played for the McCoy Colts or the Crescent Heights Vikings or whatever. What would you say to them that might be just a big advantage that MedSnet College might have over some of the other ACAC schools? Definitely the, I think people have mentioned this before. I think you've asked this question maybe a few times. Yep um just the small class sizes like you have to pick a school that's going to put your education first and a team that's going to put your education first because that's life for you like putting you ah, sorry i'm mumbling now but it's okay definitely with the college the professors are what make it the best and then also the environment of the games if you're going to play athletics it's it's so much fun like the crowd the gym is just incredible and you have lots of support around you and yeah and if you're a local kid stay home for maybe one or two years and kind of save some money too and and yeah enjoy the college it's amazing great awesome. experience i actually i want to do this go ahead has anyone ever asked you a question mm, no nobody has okay I'm why what do you, you got i'm gonna ask you what is because you've been announcing the rather games for what 10 years you said oh yeah uh, about 15 now yep 15 years. Is yep. there anything that sticks out for you? A few memories or teams that stick out for you? Well, you know what? I, and no, no offense to volleyball, uh, but I just, I, I, I find, I find working the basketball games do so much fun. You know, the energy and the player introductions. And I mean, let's face it during your era, both the men's and women's basketball teams were just electrifying right i mean mm -hmm. you know if, if if we were down in the states and we had teams like that there'd be thousands and thousands of people watching right i mean it's just oh, it, sure. it's just basketball just isn't that big here but you know it, for me the energy of the gym uh the 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 crowd you know when you or or Farion nailed a three pointer oh, you know just mm -hmm. just that level of excitement um Brian Kanikins getting upset at a coach, you know, all of that. It's just, uh, see, yeah. you, you, you know what I'm talking about, right? You oh, got a referee that's, that's got a notorious short fuse, but that's okay. You, you know, know you just... the best memory, though, is Michael Grohl when he would hit a three. You remember those yep. days? Oh, those uh, are the best. The gym yeah. was just electrified. You'll never forget that. <laughs> yeah, it's just so much fun. There's nothing like it. I mean, um, I'm, I've, I've always been a college sports fan, whether it's, uh, you know, football down in the States or whatever. It's just there's something about the the exuberance and the energy and the vibe and the, and the student section. Although we really do need to work at somehow getting more of the students from the college to, to come and support the teams. But I mean, Definitely. you know, that's that's something to work on for, for years to come. But uh, for me, just just the excitement of the gym that's what it was all about yeah. so well i just want to say you are incredible at announcing I've, i don't know if anyone tells you that but what you do for the rattler athletics is just incredible i was talking about it um with someone the other day actually just your voice and when you like at basketball games especially you get so excited and you can tell and you're just perfect for the job so great job and thank you so well, much <laughs> i i don't plan on quitting anytime soon so good all the other student athletes, you're kind of stuck with me. So, <laughs> good, that's awesome. All right, Kennedy, thank you so much. All the best, and uh, stay safe this summer. And we'll see you in the gym in the fall. And uh, say hi to all your pupils as they uh, wrap up the school year. You too. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, and have a great summer. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. All right. All right, guys. There you go. Medicine at College Rattlers. Kennedy Weary. My dog is uh, attacking me right now. We'll see you tomorrow. I think we have another guest planned for uh, tomorrow. So take care, guys, and we'll see you on Thursday night. All the best.